I'm just um, going through. So like, let's start from if there is any question with respect to the challenge. Does anyone have? Yeah, just yes. Uh, yes, hello. Hi. Yeah, my question is about what we do in practice, the practical work of the challenge. I'm kind of confused about it. Okay. Anyone want to who understood what the practical aspect of it and want to address Josiah's question? Is everyone as confused as Josias in terms of the practicality? Yeah, I just want to say something, maybe. Uh, we kind of rushed on a little bit on the previous session. And uh, I, I I think maybe uh, this question has been asked already. And we we had a slight, a very, very slight uh, uh, talk on this. But I don't think everybody, including myself, is really, really uh, grasped what we are supposed to technically do for this week. But as I said, we kind of rushed up on it in the previous uh, uh, stand up session. Good. But, Mohammed, go on. <clears throat> Okay, um, so I'm opening the queue, Johannes. <clears throat> Johannes, you can go on. Hello, yeah, we can hear you. Go on. I'm um, so confused about uh, some new guys, but what I think is we are supposed to to have an API and generate uh, an API from the from the Discord world and then work on that in our GitHub. I think that's just a little bit understanding. Yet I am so confused. I'm doing more clarification. Okay, good night. Good morning. morning. Uh, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, the first question is uh, about uh, we in the project. Uh, it is uh, in the project uh, uh, preview. It is uh, say that we are going to score the newest uh, of some uh, companies. And uh, but the data which is provided to us is uh, uh, data from that of job descriptions. So uh, that we have we have data, but the business role or maybe it is my understanding the business role of the company is to uh, categorize those data items into uh, different categories that it is relevant or uh, not relevant one uh, and uh, how we are going to concatenate that uh, which is 
is the data. We finally we may, we we will we want to have a consistent uh, consistent uh, informations uh, uh, to get from that of our uh, as an output. That is the first question. And uh, the second question is uh, uh, the uh, there is an, uh, only it is whether we are going to for entering submissions we are going to submit task one or task one and task two. It is not uh, just uh, written on the document. Uh, it is just say that one point one. So is it expected to have uh, uh, task one is more of which is uh, theoretical parts and uh, uh, task two is uh, more of the GitHub part. So, is it expected to submit both of task one and task two for entry submissions? That is not clear for me. Uh, I need to explain to you on that. Thank you. Just for your question, I just updated now the document. I was waiting for a full data. But as I was saying yesterday, that, that so that data is just um, the current data is more of a secondary uh, form that you can work on. But the primary data is that one. I mean, it's basically we you can apply the same thing for different scenarios, and it's going to be a similar. So, but I updated now, so you have two of the data, and so if you just look at it. I'm just gonna screen share. Okay. okay, so now this is the challenge that you would have, I think. Um, let me see if that's the one. No. Okay. Yeah. So this is the data that you had, and it's updated slightly also. Um, so the first data is the one that is basically it, but you have to know this data is not clean. So if you look at the, the type of the data that is linked, it's very, very not clean. Okay, so it's uh, the data will be populated as soon as we get more. I mean, we have about a thousand of them for now, just while we are signing NDA, just we got only this much, right? So here is the type of the data. This is just the, the domain it comes from and the title about it. Even the title can be, you know, quite large sometimes in terms of numbers, but the description and the body are quite a lot like it's it's it, so yeah we can work on that for now but there will be about a thousand data that we would split as test and and just like kind of we use it and the main thing here unlike that is the the final score is in units it's kind of like what you're trying to predict is is, is much more of regression. So you are kind of turning a regression problem into kind of classification. So we will talk about that. Okay. Okay. Does, and what's your second question? Does that answer or? Yeah, uh, is... Second question is the interim submissions is not uh, clear, which is it, uh, whether it is task one and task two or um, is it only task one? It is task one and task two, but let me update that. I think it was was a relic. As I said, it was just um, I will again update that one, but okay. Does that answer at least? Uh, yes, yes, thank okay. you so much. So I have a question in the interim submission. Yes. Um, uh, could you uh, go back to the document so I could ask a question? 
Yeah. And uh, yes, it said that uh, you have to address the point from task one and task two. Um, in addressing the points in task one, do we need to read all the listed documents or listed materials on task one and task on task one and task two to address the point, or we could manage uh, to read one of two or maybe three yeah. of the documents of the listed documents so that we can grasp uh, a basic information about the points yeah. and to address that the, with our initial thoughts. I think it's the 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 main thing in in that is just really that you can read one and if you understand everything great um so these are just as i said it's much more of different people learn differently and most of them are as you might see that some of them are really related so if you can understand so the most important part is that in, the, in just task one for example that you want to understand a, a little bit about positional word embedding and in the attention and transform algorithms, that's it. And this part is the task one. And in task, basically, in, call it task 1.1 1 .1 and 1.2 is more to understand um, some kind of familiarity with how um, these la large language models work, that's it. And again, you can read a few of the references. And if you are happy, you know, you can. Like if you have opened this one, you could play and understand as well as also just what is the difference between um, these models and the previous embedding models. And and then task 1.3 is the um, actually, again, uh, just, uh, just the one I mentioned the last, it's about what is the in-context learning aspect and what does, you know, why is the a good prompt is you know a key element and you know how does it work how does it, the training as well as also just the final inference um and why examples for example good examples why that why do they matter so that aspect is another one so if you understand those three whether you read one or two or three references that's fine yeah does that answer your question Ahmed? Descriptive. And uh, I kind of missed the point. When I'm I, missed, reading I missed the your. Point. I missed, I think you started in the middle. Was, does that address your question first? Uh, yes, uh, it okay. addressed my first question really good. Okay. And uh, my second question is, uh, the points that you you mentioned in the document doesn't really uh describe what we are going to do or what you are going to address which which point uh uh the three the miss the the main concept what do you want to really deliver on that point any can you make it uh, can you clarify it? I don't understand. Hello? To be Hello. Yes, can you hear me? Yep, no, I can hear you. Yes, to elaborate more on my question, um, what do I need <clears throat> to, the, to address all the points? Let, let's assume that point one what do what do i need to address what what kind of topics or uh, um, terms that i have to address so okay let's take this one right positional word embedding is that for example one yes now you would basically when you look at some of these positional encoding uh, embedding you would have some references within them as well. And you would basically start understanding what it is and how does it work. And you summarize that, your understanding. Okay, and, okay. And 
and then on another one on on attentions and transformers then also you do you kind of go through either the paper or the visualized um, tutorial of kind of like blocks and then you start understanding and then once you have understood you summarize it and then again here there is masked and multi-headed you again that's very much explained there and you write your understanding and so that basically is now the summary of your understanding now which allows you to understand basically or to be familiar with these algorithms that that goes in you know um, the second point which are just these large language models like gpt sound good i understood it thank you okay so yeah the first until tomorrow that's a lot more is going through and understanding because that's a key point in designing a good prompt great okay so we have Nathanael. Uh, hello uh, uh, my question was about the excel file uh, i think in the document i had it wasn't added on the data on the data part the data was still the job descriptions part and okay my question was how to relate those two and also how to understand the preference final score uh, are we going to apply a sigmoid into that or normalize that between zero which and one? one which one which one so now so i'm just taking this one so one of them okay okay then go on with your question okay uh, uh, my question was how to relate this one to the uh, actual the, what we're going to do for the task based for example the task says that we are we are going to suggest that uh, gpt or the llms are effective in, in the if we apply uh, somehow a valid and a uh, right prompt is that are they okay or not or valid or invalid so uh, that was my understanding and uh, my question was how to relate this, this uh, data, the job description one, to, the, to that one, to, to the task we are going to apply it on. So let's say we fit this, fit this to, our, to an LLM model and we try to just generate the keywords out of it, the yeah. relations. All. So yeah. how are we going to apply that? And my final question is, are we going to apply a sigmoid or a normalized function? Why? Why? We don't, you don't need to. This is not training. This is completely different, right? I demonstrated last time how you do it, for example. Um, and if I had historical, unfortunately. Yeah, you remember that one. Yeah. Um, so in that sense, yeah. Uh, job description. Okay, that is one. Um, yeah, so what you are going to do in this case is you're transforming this data as part of a prompt, right? And the element is that now the text element or the entity level is basically what. So you want to extract all references to diplomas as as part of also your entity, right? So in this case, you can separate it as detail as you want like that, right? These are just labels. So, and labels are usually just what we would normally put here. It's like, let me say a task is just my own label to a way of defining what a task is, right? And then another one is, I could just say, um, okay. and then I say, that is the label for your entity, and this is just the actual entity. So the name, that, so that's how, and I could do more experience. And, I could also skills. Okay. Now so this basically becomes my way of 
extracting, summarizing. So these are, this I am summarizing. Basically, there is a there is a text, and then I am summarizing what I want to get. And uh, these are basically just a way of labeling. It, you know, it's like it's for your own, so that it can output because it's matching your pattern. It's then outputting next when you give it a new unknown text. It would give you in this structure. So you're defining a structure basically, right? So yeah, so it's exactly like um, so if we do that. Uh, And this, and someone tell me why this would be useful. In order to get a detailed uh, information real quick from a very large text, maybe. Yeah, but you know, why, would I, why would I give it some structure? Like, you know, I'm just giving it structure like that. Uh, the better the prompt, the better the result will be. So yeah. uh, the structure will help it, the algorithm to give us a good result. I think. That's very true. And in particular, this also, I am assuming in the in its training, it probably had something like that. Probably what is called Jupe description. And then someone had done. And you know, when I'm closer to what it is trained, is of course that's great, right? And that's why it, it, it's the art is basically, you know, I think one description that I really, I find it, uh, it's think of it talking to a dog, okay? And it's not the language that you think that matters, right? It's the, you have to be good at communicating with this thing. And this is exactly like that. Or I think another person that I've heard like it is also in some way you have you know very very kind of multiple dogs and you kind of trying to get ask them to do something and it's up to you know it it is not you might they might not do or they might not do exactly what you want but with a sufficient coherence you might you might get you know what you want so it in some way it's really a way of communicating with this thing. We know it, what it has been trained by a huge set of data, and you don't know what even set of data that it's trained, but you hope that it has seen so much enough that it would be able to understand such pattern because it's ultimately, it's a pattern engine, right? So it, it's basically, it will take this one it will not try to do, you know, like that's the current, what I'm gonna do today in the today's tutorial is that, what does that mean, you know, if you do, do understand how transformers and this, you know, self-attention works, it's basically what it does, especially in this case, it's just, it takes sequence of characters and then it's trying to predict what is the next sequence, right? Of course, it it not only just depend, you know, it, it has dependence, um, of in, on the sequence. So that's basically what you are trying to do. You are trying to come up with the next one, given the previous um, ones and of course all the training. So in this case, the weights you are not changing, right? Because you are not doing fine tuning. That means you are not at, at all changing weights, but by the pattern you are giving it, you are probably doing some kind of filtering, right? It's because then you know, this one goes, it builds up um, these different elements, like, so it's kind of conditioning on them. So it's basically, you know, it, it's it's not clear what it's exactly actually doing. You shouldn't also trust me in whatever I'm saying. You know, either it could be doing something completely different, but there are multiple interpretation of it. And one of them is that it's like a filter. You know, the, the pattern that you give it is like a filter, which way it's, in in you are activating and then basically that's what allows you to get of course what you want 
um, but it could be doing completely something different else, right? So if I now give that one, and let's say skill, um, statistical data analysis, for example, um, experience, Okay, now if I bring another job description. Why do you think this is important as well? Why am I putting that? Because here, I think there is um, generate stop sequence. What do you think this is doing? Based during your reading. I think it's a, it's a delimiter to tell how many examples we are giving it in order for it to have a very good context about uh, what we want what we wanted to give. This, this is called stop sequence. I think it means uh, uh, interpret what you got now. Till the stop sequence, it it treated uh, it treat, uh, it treat, it treated it treats it as an as a, a separate sequence from the next one. So it, it interprets that is as its own. I think that. Okay. Anyone else? Because the, the thing is, such a, just a small detail will help you and figure out so many things, like exactly how even the whole thing works. So what it really does is that it's nothing, you know. What what did we say? How does it process now when we give it to the model? What do you think it, it, it does? Of course, that's what task task one and task two are, especially task one is it's to understand how it works, right? How it works is that it takes basically token by token and it puts it and and kind of ultimately it does, you know, it learns different um, parameters for it and ultimately then it outputs another embedding right which is usually the next word and you are basically now shifting um, as you go on so if you start now from here task something you know colon extract so it's gonna be like of course extracting that and then next would be okay it takes this one as an as one and then it tries to predict this one, and then next it predicts, it takes this one, and it tries to predict that one. That's what how it was trained, and it was told how these sequences are coming. And then it was told also when is the end. So one of the end thing is there is a new line, but another one, so 
you know, that's in its training, it takes, it processes line by line, and then in that line, the end of the line, which is slash n in this case would be, you know, where it stops. But also it has other sequence delimiters that it tells it when the sequence is uh, finished because it triggers some other conditions. Now, this one is basically now we can define what the stop sequence is. If, because, what does it do? It's basically, it has context vectors, like that means the amount that it, it's able to generate. Right, within that, it will basically then take this one, and then it will try to predict what's coming, right, what's next, it's like given just the context. And while it was generating, if it generates somehow this one, then it, it says stop. So ultimately now, you know, we are going to expect, of course, we're going to expect this one will generate after this. It will generate this one, the degree, and then experience, hopefully. But imagine if it, it, it develops degree, but then it second, you know, it generates this one because of the pattern it sees. But imagine followed that is this sequence that came. Because you know, we don't know what it generates, let's say, and then it stops there, right? But if it doesn't, then it continues. It generates whatever it expects within the degree, and then it then generates next, and then it generates next until it finds this one, whatever I, I give it stop sequence. I can give it multiple stop sequence to actually start generating, right? It is that particular, this element, it's, it's so small, but incorporates the actual really how, how it's working. Do you have a question? Is that clear? Yes, it is. So, you know, it's your chance to ask as much question as you can. I have a different question though. This yeah. part is clear. Uh, yeah. My question uh, is, uh, I mean, I, I want to re just uh, rephrase uh, what would be like the technical part of our challenge and uh, you tell me if I am um, uh, if I understood it wrong, and I have also a question uh, regarding the data that we're gonna be working on. Uh, I understood uh, to this technical the task of our like this week would be um, to like consume an API provided by these uh, large language models, and uh, we uh, structure. Uh, or we prompt the engineer basically, or we structure our data. We get the the, I mean the data we uh, are provided for the training, and uh, structuring it and feeding it through the API to get uh, a, a result back. And we all we just uh, cross check it with uh, this testing uh, uh, data. I guess that's what I understand. Uh, but my question is, uh, in the data set we're given, we're, we're given uh, uh, a, a JSON format data that, is, uh, that contains uh, the list of jobs uh, that has already been like uh, prompted out. Um, so are we uh, uh, going to be using those data? Because in the beginning of the project overview, uh, it says that the client uh, wants us to just score or uh, score the news we get in the range from zero uh, to ten. Uh, no, zero. So again, let me stop you there because I've changed it. That there is there are two data. One data is this one, which is yeah, yeah. which was that one, and this one is different. And this one yes. is entity extraction. So in entity extraction, it has nothing got to do score. It has got to oh. do with what I'm doing. Like, I mean, you can use it for anything, right? So one is uh, trying to extract entities. Okay, so this is this data, I mean, for the entity extraction, uh, we only use it for entity extraction, just that, yes. uh, but yes. we yes. use the, uh, the data one for our project, right? No, for, we were using both, right? It's just, I think your project mostly is to design and understand prompts for different problems. They're not going to be one is scoring, one is synthetic extraction, it could be whatever, but 
from for for now you're going to use two you're going to explore it for two types right one is for entity extraction and the other one is for um scoring basically document scoring and the document scoring will be slightly different how you approach it will be different so it will give you two flavors of for example you know a, a score in this case having being so some kind of value that's you know it's very hard to get um, these models which are really trained for language to be able to give you float numbers right because they're really hard to do that so instead you may need to convert this data into for example splitting let's imagine we told you this there is from even if it, there i see now 12 but it's let's say uh, between 0 and 10 and i think maybe it's just um, i think it's it's maybe is this if we might be using actually this one uh, the one which is called analyst so i you know i also don't know that much about this data but hopefully it's probably this one because this one has 12 and this is the only one that is in between the range so i'm gonna edit them as well so you take this one and you're trying to predict 1.33 like for this type of uh, data right now this element is not really in a way that languages understand instead you can now for example one strategy would be if bisection method in the bisection method you have the minimum and maximum right the maximum being 10 minimum being zero you might say like whether it is above five or not right you, you give it example which is above five and then you tell it whether it is above five and also example below five and then you tell it is this above five is it positive or negative that means positive means above five negative means let's say below five okay and then if it is above five now you go into another bisection is it's between now between five the middle between five and, and ten let's say 7.25 is it between 7.25 or above or, or low so like that you can have a certain you know a few iterations that you would be able to then estimate the range maybe just in the first digit only maybe you know just whether it's one or two but mostly given that you know this maybe it's like whether you know how much it, it takes a resolution of um, 0.5 you want to arrive to a resolution of 0.5 so that means a few iterations of bisections to get to that point so by doing this are we just transforming the data from like re regression problem to like bisecting yes. by uh, bisecting into a classification problem exactly. so that the llm could uh, yeah. uh, help us classify yes. it. exactly that's exactly the point so these are strategies that you would come up so this is one strategy you could you could another way you could turn it into a multi-classification problem and then you might say okay is it between zero and one you know one and two two and three blah blah you give it a label and then it will tell you where it is right and then within that also you might then decompose that into another multi-class so that would be a two-step process right but of course the the more complex it is the language model might not be strong enough you know to give you that but all you're trying to care is that ultimately it's not to win we, we're not sure if it's even useful for this problem all we want to prove is that is there a strategy that can give it you know slightly better you know your first initial try can be the base you know the, the very very baseline and then you are saying like is there a better way of doing it if not your your conclusion will basically become no i think so far we are unable to find a good uh, strategy that works in this in this sense for multi-class type of uh, regression type of question you know, that's a result okay yeah. so uh, our final uh, results will be just recommendation whether these uh, LLM models will work for this kind of problem more than client. that more than that how much can you achieve like so you will have a thousand kind of data point and you split it into test something that you know you know that you would ultimately after you know into validation test and train and then you would use those training and to get to your strategy and finally 
you would compute it on your test and say like, okay, this is how the best we can achieve, right? In terms of R square or in terms of, you know, anything. Um, and then you say like, okay, this is the best we can achieve. And that, what that best means, like, of course, if that best is not, you know, with just a small other clustering method, for example, if you can achieve better, you just say like, oh, of course, it doesn't perform as much as even this and that. So that's what you are trying to do. How much can you go with using LLMs in this kind of modeling? And for sure, in the kind of modeling for for actually the more much more of text, much more of summarization or entity extraction, it should really do well, better, better than the other one, probably. Yeah. We don't know. Okay. So your final thing is really trying to de come up with strategies to help you get the best you can, and then ultimately summarize what that best is. By best, Absolutely. usually, yeah. By best, usually, you you have a known thing. You're trying to evaluate it against the known thing. How can we like uh, evaluate the performance? Uh, Here, do Let's we have imagine. a yeah. Let's imagine this one is just, I restrict this one to be just the one thing I will not use. I will only use it for as a test. I split myself. I mean, all I need is one or two examples, right? In this case, that's a whole point. I, I, yeah. I, I told you that this would be 1,000 soon, because we're just waiting. This is just a sample. But with that 1,000, you can do a lot. Because all you need is one or two examples. Uh, most of the time and you know of course a few more examples will be better but that's it oh sure so you split it as just test validation and train and then you would use so for all your reporting you would use the test the test set how it performed on the test set even its stability it's many other things you know the order as i said the order of even the example matters because this is pattern matching, you know, so any change in the pattern changes it. And that's, there are some papers in that one that I, I shared, how they mitigated that effect. So it's that. Yeah? One more question, if I may. Go on. I think, you know, this uh, is really a free flow question because I want everybody to leave this one having a clearer understanding so we can take as much as time. Go on. Uh, so, uh, so the client uh, wants the uh, uh, to measure. I mean, the to like scale it from zero to ten, based on like uh, what a, to a topic that we're going to compare it to. So, what is that topic is going to be? Uh, I mean, I can tell you that that is so that in this case, for example, for this one, um, for this data, they really are looking at events um so what they call breaking events in the news that potentially will lead to some demonstration or um to some kind of there is you know some form of uh, social disorder call it so what they are interested in is that if it is a news that has a potential to like for example if you look at this one where it has 1.66, right? So this is this is the title, right? So let's just take this one and make it like that. And then also this one, okay. Okay. And the body will be a lot. So now let's take the one that has 1.66, right? So this is saying uh, the construction sector is expected to be boosted by riots and looting. Yeah? Now, this one is a potential news, something related to, of course, that is talking about two things. One is probably that was it was there was there 
like a social disorder. So it's kind of a repair. It's a positive whatever, but it's still related to that. So that's why the highest. It's actually the highest because it also, if we didn't know there was, this is an indicator of that. So another one, let's look uh, 1.33. That's also another one. So somebody is arrested for murder and da 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 da, right? So this one is again, it might it might lead to some form of a thing. So that's exactly what the, the data it is. So you're trying to score. So in this case, the you know that topic is called social kind of news that are more the topic of the news is much more related to um a breaking news associated that could be associated to some follow-up um social unrest so you want to be able to score that now that's what you're trying to build uh sorry a real quick question but i thought yeah. these large language models are uh continuous are going to give us an output of a continuation of uh a yeah. text basically how are we going to get the scores are, are we supposed to let the large language model score it because i i can see here there are scores right exactly but that's exactly the point you you need to have a strategy think about it okay how do you score it how do you use a tool that's called that it only knows how to give you the next thing the next pattern how do you use that for scoring so How basically, you... I think okay. So uh, that's where the the kind of encoding comes, right? The changing the categorical things into exactly. uh, into like uh, the the scores into some form of you know beans uh, and then beans into probably or into bisection type of thing. Yeah, exactly. So it's it's everything you know. That's that's the whole point. Yeah, but I think it's oh I now I get it. okay. Thank you. Yeah, it, you know, it, it is, of course, it takes a little bit of rotation. You can't just get, it's not like before, you get, okay, here it is, and then do EDA, and then that's it. No, this this is much more of thinking. This is much more of, you know, kind of gaming. Um, because, as, as I said, it's about talking to something who only who has only a certain language, and whose language even you don't understand how it operates inside. All you know that you give it something, and it's so good in some things, it has seen so many things, it will just say, wow, just next, and then another wow. And then you're trying to build with that a certain product. Yeah, yeah, I get it now, thank you. Okay, great. Uh, Emitna? Uh, yes, uh, I'm not clear about uh, how we divide the, the data into, um, training validation and testing here i mean okay this so is different yeah think think of it this way i just took a few examples right from the data that was given right yeah it was just some some uh, in this case for the the job description right i take yeah. that one and then i i told okay so this is this is just basically if i were to put this one in in, in Excel, where good shit. That's what it happens is that okay, there is a label called made like something, like for example, experience, and text is three plus years. So I'm gonna translate it that way. So I'm gonna give it first job description to be or a document to be that, and I'm gonna give it to be experience to be that. But there's not only one experience. There might be more experiences. So in this case, let's take skills. So there is one skill is connected related products another skill is fiber optics another is skill is developing okay mm -hmm. and then i just come and write it in in my own way just so that i can give it first i give it i give something so that it may cue it something because the better i have that it might help i can remove it as well it's there's no need it's just all I can remove even that if I want to top description right I don't need to and then I but I want to give it some form of um, some form of a way that it will help me not the code just in this way it will help me know what are 
how how it should be decomposing it okay so for for example i might just go only one one thing at a time instead of i wanted to summarize all i wanted to just basically me give me only skills okay so uh, so i will just like for training i am because this one already has used some other thing you know it's maybe a human labeled that it got you know it has some good labeling so i would just use that one that one is my training set okay, okay. um so then i would just say okay you know skills developing And another one is skills is again this. Okay, like that. And then I give it another job description. But in this case, I don't need to tell it job description because I didn't tell it anything. Um, so, okay, and then I now want to give it i want it hopefully that it will give me that so this is my design now i so this is called training this is uh, called training now okay right because i gave it one and i gave it a pattern and then this one is called a test or i mean in this case an input because i want it to generate something for me based on this okay Okay, now I generate, I try to generate. Okay. And hopefully it finishes. So experience, I know, with, is there anything like that? Uh, it could be experience with CICD tools, experience with cloud-based, experience with constraint agent technologies, configuration management, automation tools and test automation probably that is the case it's if you look at that editing software organization release automation is there technical experience and release automation engineering and it was also CICD tools absolutely you know so it does give me the summarization see now I take that one and I, if I just only remove experience with, it actually gave me exactly all I need. Um, okay, but then now, is this considered a... Yeah, so now you go and you would just take all of those that it gave you, and then you compare with what, for this one, what are experiences and skills, right? Technical management, you know, release engineering, tools engineering, DevOps, you know. So then you just say whether these are, you know, whether they match your expectation. If not, you try now to give it more training samples. And you try. So until you find, and you know, of course, you might not achieve your goal but you try your best to try to get exactly what you want. So for entity extraction, there might be a form of prompting and like that, that let's call prompt, a prompt that might work better. Yeah, but uh, we're not going to do this um, by hand, are we? Like we're going to write the code to do this for us. Yes, basically, yeah, right? so and export this one, the code, if I want to even. Here it is. Yeah. So the design of this prompt is your your thing. Okay. So uh, I mean, is it a clear uh, um, division of data? So are we going to take the data and divide it into the test data that we will leave out, and then yes. with the rest of the data we have to? Um, I mean, in the example you used, is the first one a uh, training and the second one validation? Is it is it as yeah. simple as that or? Okay. Yeah, it's as simple as that. Okay. And the number of trains and the number of whatever, it's like just because you are exploring, it's like you can think of it fine tuning. So for fine tuning, you know, you, you use only your validation and your um, 
your training until you get yeah. a certain certain model so in this case your model is not the model just which is already existing training trained one your model is the prompt you're actually the order the summarization the removal it could be just the idea on on the text what should you do what kind of EDA should you do to improve your chance of, you know, getting the best result? I see. Um, okay, I have another question. It's um, yeah. kind of different. Uh, yeah, so here the result we're expecting is a uh, text, like we have to, we want the skills. Yeah. But then uh, the wording could be uh, slightly different than what we, we want or what we have as a result like uh, of our label data already. So yeah. how do we compare? Yeah, again, that's again your code output. It, like, let's imagine, just let's take one of this. Let's just from the title, okay? Yeah. Okay, now, I want, so let's imagine there is only between one and two, okay? I take this one. Um, yeah, so, I don't... you know, I, I can give it actually, it's a, it's a very, you know, there is another way also you can give it some kind of classifier. Like, you know, they, there are multiple ways you can tell it. So when you reach, you realize there are many ways to interact with it. Because these large language models allow you also to to do some kind of question. Oh, sorry. Uh, sometimes it might allow you to, it might allow you to give it as multiple choice. So it can answer from a multiple choice. It can answer as it can just generate the next word. In this case, anything. It could be, you know, you can give it positive, negative, or, you know, like you can use it for sentiment or for anything. Or you can um, also get embedding. So the embedding means basically you just get a vector for, for your sentence. Okay? So there are many ways you can use it. So in, in just based on just uh, the generate, for example, I can say, um, um, let's imagine this is, and, and, and I give it like that. And let's imagine, given that this is important, I say, like, uh, let's imagine just, I wanna only score between one and two, okay? Between zero and two. And then anything above one, let me give it a uh, score. Um, uh, hi, okay. And another one, I will just take the other one and let me take the zero one. Even just this one, okay? And uh, and score low. Okay. Now I am gonna give it another one, which is document. And in this case, the document I wanna give it is just the one which I know slightly are different, this one, which is 0 0.33. Okay, let's see, what does it, what does it come? Stop sequence. See, now it, it, it also generated on load shading itself, you have to know. It just didn't know, but it filled because it felt that it wasn't the document was not complete. So it, you know, it, it generated, and then the second part, it's it just matched the pattern. So it's true, right? Now, yeah, of but course, it, between zero and two, this it, one. Isn't it yeah. possible that it can tell, give us a token that we, we didn't enter? Maybe we use high and low, maybe it will give us like medium or something. Can we it, control it that? 
okay. I mean, why? Like, exactly. That's called post processing, pre processing. You do, I think, you know, uh, you can't okay. expect you have to, to not do anything. You have to deal with it. Okay. Absolutely. You have right. to deal with it. All you, you have is that something that just gives you something, and you can't change that. And it's up to you to design not to give it to you based on different, of course, learning how to interact with it. As I say it, for example, I interact yeah, so with it with dash dash. Imagine yeah. I don't do that. And I try to, to take that. And it doesn't know what this now, this thing. So let's see how much it generates. Of course, number of tokens it generates is 50. But I can make it 500. Let's imagine. The 500 means it will generate a lot of tokens, right? Just let's make it 200. Now, it will generate a lot. Let's see what it will generate.